answer to this question will really depend on what round of investment you're talking about. Uh, Pre-seed, seed, series A, there's a number of different investment rounds that startups do. If you're watching this, the chances are the one that is relevant to you is a pre-seed round of investment, which is all about getting your idea off the ground, having that initial capital. So for that, interestingly, the thing that most people haven't realized in the, in the startup world is that, that the, the people you can go to for money often don't even call themselves an investor. You need to think that you're in the middle and then there's a circle around you of say 20 people hopefully who know and respect you and then those 20 people hopefully have 20 people who know and respect them and trust them. So that's 420 people within two degrees of separation of you that could be potential investors if they've got the money to dispose and, and they're willing to lose that on investing in a startup. So that's the kind of people you're looking for. They could be a corporate, they could own a small business, and the, the likelihood is that they don't actually see themselves or call themselves an investor, they're not a professional investor. That's certainly the lowest hanging fruit for that pre-seed round. Um, and then beyond that, of course, there's angel investors, VCs, family offices. There's a whole bunch of smart money that you can go to uh, beyond that on the seed round. But for the first round, think about who you know, trust, respect, um, think about those networks that, that you've already got and bring people on the journey. You don't have to ask for investment. Just tell people what you're doing, talk about your idea, get it out there, ask for feedback and advice and that's when the magic happens. You, you start getting offers for investment when, when you do that right. Every idea actually needs a different amount of money to get off the ground. So, but. The, the short answer to this is that it's probably more than you think. If you want to go get a, a franchise for something like Subway and things like that, often it's over half a million dollars. So of course, if you're going to do a, an innovative idea, a, an app, a website, a physical product, of course, there's a, bit, there's a pretty big setup cost. The main things to think about are your costs. So what, what would it cost to have you full time? Because no great business can, can happen if you're not full time in the business. And then what are the sort of product and marketing costs that you need? So in many cases in Australia, it's often 100 to 300 grand that will be required in the first 12 to 18 months to, to really get the thing cranking. Short answer is yes. If you were going to start a cafe, you obviously wouldn't stay in your corporate job. So if you want to build a really cool startup, then obviously that's going to take a lot of commitment and time, but you don't need to do it straight away. So things like validating and testing, stress testing the idea, you can, you can stay in your job while you're doing that, then raise some money and then jump in full time. But absolutely your number one goal should be going full time on your business. I've heard thousands of ideas and the answer is maybe. And the way that you have to test your idea is you need to not build your product but actually look at all of the assumptions that you've made that come along with that idea around what people would pay and who will care about it. You need, to, you need to document those assumptions and then you need to act like a scientist and actually think of experiments that you could run to prove those assumptions are actually true and that's what will tell you whether or not the idea is any good. So on face value we often have a gut feeling but there's many ideas that I, that I hear about that other people have done that I wouldn't have thought was good in the first place but they turn out to be awesome. So we try not to overjudge ideas too much and the most important thing is stress testing and validating that idea to prove or disprove how viable it is. Firstly, if you can't code yourself, you don't have to learn how to code because that could take, it's a technical skill and it could take you years and years. It's good to learn a little bit, but you certainly don't have to build this yourself if it's not one of your core skill sets. So then the question is, do you do, do, you do it in-house and hire a coder, uh, an engineer, or do you pay a freelancer or an agency to build it? And the answer is it really depends on how complicated your product is. If your idea is a real, if you see it as a real tech startup, it's quite, it's really a platform and it's quite custom. Our default advice is it needs to be in-house. You're a software company, you need software talent in-house. If the, if the product is incredibly simple, like an e-commerce store or just something, an, a simple online website, then sometimes you can stitch together other um, existing software to, to do it. Like things like Shopify, for example, you could just pay a subscription to access things that are already built. or you can go to an agency, an ethical agency that doesn't charge you an arm and a leg and just pay them to smash out your first minimum viable product and then maybe later on you'll bring that, that software in-house. So in reality, the biggest thing that you need to think about, if it's a tech startup, you need in-house software engineers because investors are going to really think that that's important.